So in 2015, in February, we had some major snowfall here, and uh, we had four major storms in a period of four weekends and over 23 days with about eight feet of snow total. Between the second and the third snowfall, I knew I was going to be in trouble because I had already built up these snow fort walls back along the back side of my property, and typically those would melt between storms, but there was no melting happening, and so I couldn't get any more snow off of my parking area where I parked during snow emergencies to get off the street in the city where I live. So I had to take my snow blower and I had to cut a path through this massive wall to the back area and create the snow farm back here so I could push more snow back. So uh, as it turns out I had uh, there was a small snowstorm about four inches that covered my entire patio and driveway up to the street and I had to not only cut this path I had to clear all this snow and along the side along the driveway to the side I had a big snow bank that I also needed to move to the back to make way for the next big storm the third big storm that we had so I uh, filled up my trusty snow blower um, before I started and I went out and attacked the job and so let me give you some data about what I did here as you can see here's my trusty snow blower it's a craftsman five horsepower with a 25 the 24 inch uh, cutting width on it and when I blow snow it actually shoots it out in a parabolic path it's a, it has about a five foot apogee and a, and a 12 foot range so if I were to take some snow from over here for example I would blow it and it would shoot it over 12 feet and I'd keep on blowing it down and this snow would be shoot shot down 12 feet and 12 feet and 12 feet and 12 feet and of course after I move down 12 feet I'm hitting the snow that I originally started and I'd shoot that 12 more feet and so on and so forth and I had to move this entire snow bank along the side of my driveway. And this was really tough, compacted snow from the previous snow storms that I had uh, piled up there. This had to move, be moved all the way to the back. Um, so that gives you an idea. Of my, so my snowblower can't shoot things 75 feet away into the backyard. I actually had to do it little bits at a time. Um, and so I, but at first, I, First of all, I had to cut a path through this massive snow wall that I already created, and that that width of that path is about three feet wide and about 25 feet long. It's a curve, and the average snow depth, and this is really heavy packed snow, it's about four feet um, deep for this snow. So the first thing I did is I carved out that path to make room for all the other snow. Secondly, I, I had to clear all the snow off the driveway, this light snow that had fallen. I had four inches and it was about 1,300 square feet for my entire driveway, I'd estimate, so you don't have to do that calculation, did that for you. And then lastly, I talked about the snow bank already. This was heavy compacted snow that I had already, from the previous two storms, I had pushed along the side here, and that was about three feet wide and about four feet deep and about 20 feet long. And that entire s snow bank had to be moved back into the snow farm. So as you can see, I have some dimensions here of the patio, um, if you look, the, the snowbank, for example, um, I would say the average distance I had to move it was about 75 feet. Of course, my snowblower moves things 12 feet at a time. And so I had to move it 12 feet, 12 feet over and over again from the beginning to the end. Um, I give you dimensions for the overall patio dimensions because I've got to move this 1,300 square feet of snow. But of course, some of the snow is very close to my final destination. Some of it's far away. So maybe you can use some sort of average to figure that out. And I also have to figure out the, the original snow that I moved out here, which is heavy compacted snow. I had to shift over to this area. And you have some dimensions. And you could estimate perhaps how far I did that. You also need to know some density of the snow. The compacted snow, which would be any snow that I moved out in this this initial pathway I carved is goal in part one, and in part three, this heavy snowbank that I moved, I'd estimate that weighed about 11 pounds per cubic feet. And you notice that's about five kilograms uh, per cubic foot. Um, and the lightweight snow, I would say, is only about a tenth of that, so it's about half a kilogram per cubic foot, I would say. Um, overall, it took me about an hour and a half, I would say, to to do this entire bit of work. Uh, I would have worked longer except I ran out of gas. Unfortunately, my snowblower only holds a half a gallon. So, um, But it turns out that was just enough for me to, um, to pull off this job. It was a nice day and I moved through it relatively quickly. 
So your job is, can you use this data to calculate the snow, the total work done by the snowblower? Don't care about gravity, don't care about anything else, just the snowblower's work. And I'll tell you right now, there's, there's hard ways to do this and lengthy, complicated ways to do this, and there are uh, much faster ways to do this, which will give you um, good numbers as well. And you'll get your bonus regardless of which way you do, and you should not discuss this problem with anybody else, and you should do this by yourself. Um, whoever gets the answer first, and if I see somebody's answer looks, somebody, uh, looks like somebody else's without supporting work, um, they won't get a grade. Uh, you must have supporting work for your answer, and it must not match anybody else's. So good luck, have fun, and see how quickly you can do this and how efficiently you can do this.